everyone, it's Ranger Allie and welcome to our May broadcast. We are standing at Pass Mountain Overlook on the trail that's next to the Overlook and it is a beautiful spring day. We can hear the birds singing their songs and the greens are so vibrant this time of year. Uh, we have a lot to share with you today, including some of our special events that are planned through the spring. Uh, we have uh, news to share about upgrades to our infrastructure as well as improvements to the park's health. So we're going to get into all of that, uh, but before we get started, just remember that if you have any questions throughout the broadcast, please drop those below in the comments and we will get back to you because we're watching with you and we want to answer all of your questions that you might have. So starting off, we're going to talk about our special events that are happening in the month of May. So next weekend, which is May 11th and May 12th, we have our 38th annual Wildflower Weekend. And that is a heavily followed uh, program and we are really excited for our 38th year of its installment. We have guided hikes, we have programs that focus on the diversity and importance of our flowering plants. And we also have the winter ceremony for the youth art contest that's happening that Saturday. So we're gonna bring all of that to you and you can find that program schedule on our website. We also have a brochure that you can ask for at the visitor centers or at the entrance station when you arrive. We also have Kids to Parks Day, which is May 18th. And this is a annual and nationwide celebration to play outdoors. And so we encourage kids of all ages to come to their public lands and their, and their local national parks to enjoy a day outside. At both visitor centers, we are going to have junior ranger touch tables so you can have that interaction with things that you might find in Shenandoah National Park. You'll find those at both visitor centers throughout the day. Some more exciting news to share with you is that we are bringing back our park newspaper. We used to hand out a site bulletin with, that was printed in black and white and we condensed it onto one page. This newspaper is eight pages long and it's in full color and it involves uh, tips for your visit, regulations, a naturalist calendar, a ranger program schedule and other operating hours and it's amazing and we're so excited to bring that back to you. Uh, you can ask for one of those at the entrance station and you can get those upon your arrival to the park. Other information that you can find about that pertains to your visit you can find on our website especially in the alerts section. If you notice right now we have some alerts that are uh, happening in the park uh, just as things are being upgraded including our electrical work in the park and so right now Big Meadows is Still experiencing some electrical upgrades. Uh, those are nearing completion. And then they're going to move on to Elkwallow Elk Wayside and Matthews Arm Campground. And so those are, they are having delayed openings, but they are going to begin that work very soon. Any other information that is important to your visit in the park, you should look on the website so you know before your arrival. Hi guys, I'm joined by Evan Childress, who is our Chief of Natural and Cultural Resources. And we brought him on camera because we have uh, a treatment that we have planned for mid-May. And so we just wanted to talk to an expert about uh, some of the challenges that the park is facing with spongy moth, which is an invasive and pretty destructive invasive species in the park, targeting some specific areas uh, for the last few years. and so. We just really want to mitigate that and we want to make sure that we're doing it in the best way and safe way possible and so we brought on Evan to talk a little bit about that. First, uh, before we get into the details of that treatment, can you talk about the damage that spongy moth has done and what could potentially happen if left untreated? Sure, yeah, so spongy moths are quite destructive um, and they have been introduced from Europe so they're non-native and so are oak trees which is what the spongy moths eat as caterpillars, are quite vulnerable to them. So when the caterpillars emerge in the spring, they can eat all of the leaves off of oak trees. And in 2022, they ate all of the leaves off of about 10,000 acres within the central district of the park, and then 17,000 in 2023. So we've seen some pretty big outbreaks over the last couple of years. And what we're concerned about now is 
ultimately oak trees dying because they've been defoliated. So the first time an oak tree typically can put out a new flush of leaves and recover. The second time it's more stressful because they've used some of their energy the last year. Um, and the third time it can really lead to a lot of oak mortality. So in these areas that have already been hit a couple of times with outbreaks, we're concerned about oak mortality. And so we're hoping that by treating in this area, we can stave off some of that mortality. And the, the two main goals of the treatment are to keep oaks alive for the benefit of the forest. There are so many species that depend on oak trees, wildlife, birds, fungus, all kinds of things, insects. Um, and so we wanna support the forest for those species. And we also want to prevent the development of dead trees in high use areas. Dead trees eventually fall down and mm -hmm. that can be a, a major safety hazard for us. So we're, we're targeting treatments to these areas where oak trees have been defoliated, meaning all their leaves have been eaten off in a couple of years. And then also that overlap with sensitive habitats and high use visitor areas. Right. So now let's get into the treatment. So what are we doing? What is the park doing to treat spongy moth? Yeah, so essentially we are spraying what's called uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. It's kind of a mouthful, known uh, more easily as Bt, uh, which is a naturally occurring bacterium that is in the soil. I'm sure it's right around us here. It's on uh, naturally occurring on leaves. It is also used in certified organic agriculture. So people put it on their broccoli uh, to deal with pests there. Um, so it's a pretty common uh, pesticide that is derived from a naturally occurring bacterium. Mm -hmm. And so the plan is to spray that from a low flying helicopter over about 3000 acres within the central area of the park. So that includes the area just north of Big Meadow um, that includes the campground there and the lodge area uh, up to the Skyland de developed area in the central district. Mm -hmm. as well. So what should visitors be prepared for if they come to the park? Like what types of things might impact their visit? Yeah, so essentially there'll be a low, low flying helicopter in that area. Uh, so it'll, the treatment will occur on two days in the morning, uh, starting pretty early around 6.30 and going through about noon. And during that time, the, the helicopter will essentially just be weaving back and forth across the landscape, trying to spread this uh, treatment across the forest. And so uh, folks that are in that area would feel a light mist coming down from the helicopter. The helicopter is quite loud and creates a wind as well. So, you know, if you're trying to enjoy nature, that's probably not the peaceful experience you're looking for. However, the BT itself is not at all harmful. Um, it, doesn't hurt gear, it doesn't hurt people or pets. Um, vehicles. It, vehicles should mm -hmm. be fine. It does leave a slight sticky residue, um, but that can be removed with soap and water. And uh, so it shouldn't cause any damage, lasting damage to anything or anyone. Um, you know, for people's enjoyment, you know, if I were coming to the park, I probably wouldn't go to this area just because it's not going to be solitude and mm -hmm. nature uh, like you might expect in Shenandoah, typically. Right. And we do have 500 miles of trails outside of those areas. We have other campgrounds. Um, we have backcountry camping that you can look into if you're prepared for that. So there are some other options uh, if you are coming to the park. Uh, talk about the time frame. Why was that selected? Sure. Yeah. So the window that we have is between May 15th and May 22nd. And it was selected based on the timing of development of caterpillars. It's not the ideal time because it's a popular time to come to Shenandoah National Park. But if you do it at another time, it's really not effective. So when the caterpillars emerge and start feeding on the leaves, that's the time that you want to treat because to uh, be affected by the treatment, they need to actually ingest it mm -hmm. within a few days of the treatment. Uh, otherwise, it's not effective. So we time it based on that there. The caterpillars have already emerged down in the valley and in at lower elevations. Um, and so the US Forest Service is targeting treatments in those kinds of areas first, and then they'll move up here to the higher elevations in mid-May. Great. And so we actually have already been informing the public about this in a number of ways, and we still plan to inform them. Uh, I believe five days before we will know 
that it is our turn and so we did release a news release on april 22nd and you can find that on our website uh, some of the other ways that we're notifying the public is by putting an alert on the website like we mentioned before we're going to post it on our social media uh, we're going to have signage uh, there's going to be signage near the treatment areas and at the entrance station so you'll know ahead of time and we also have our alert system that we'll utilize. So if you are not already signed up for that alert system, text SHIN ALERTS, all one word, all caps, to 888-777. You can opt out at any time, but if you are planning to visit the park during that time frame that we just said, then make sure that you're signed up for those alerts so that you know what to look for. Any of your questions that you may have about the spongy moth treatment, you can find on our website. There's an FAQ page for the spongy moth treatment right on our homepage. So check that out if uh, you have any additional questions. And Evan, thank you so much for being on camera with us today. My pleasure. All right, we will see you all again soon. Thank you so much, goodbye.